Thank you, and, and I will say that I'll, I'll try not to use any phrases like Mike could or the same difference, since I, I know those are real Southern, and I use them very often. Okay, S oops. Oh, shucks, my first couple of slides are missing, so um, I'll just have to see if they're hidden or, oh, no? <laughs> yeah. But there were such fun slides, and it's really a shame that um, that had to happen. So what I wanted to, to talk to you about is what we're doing in trying to use biochemical fingerprints to understand health and wellness. So you can all know that we can use handprints and fingerprints to identify a person, an individual, or we can look at hair color and uh, eye color to be able to uh, give identifying features, and those are related to genotypes. But we also have, within our bodies, biochemicals or molecules that, um, that we can metabotype, and we can know about our biochemical fingerprints and our metabotypes. So um, let me see what's after this one. Nothing. So... <laughs> Oh, so they did give me something after it, okay. This is sort of uh, not, not very good, but that's okay. Um, been in worse situations in my life, believe me. I used to spin thread in a mill on third shift when I was in high school. So, you know, metabotyping and talking to you guys is really easy compared to that, right? So, um, so what we do is, um, is, is we, we, um, we analyze um, biospecimens that we can get from either human subjects or in model systems, uh, urine, serum, plasma, sweat, you know, all kind of biospecimens. And in your biospecimens, you have lots of low molecular weight metabolites, and that's what we use to get your biochemical fingerprint or your metabotype. And those low molecular weight metabolites in your state of health, they have one signature, and if you have a disease, those metabolites can increase or decrease, okay, that can be associated with the disease or dysfunction or disorder, or even with an exposure, like an exposure to an environmentally relevant compound. So that's the kind of stuff we do. And we do that uh, by comparing states of wellness, states of sickness, uh, in these bi uh, from subjects that have these biological specimens. And then we use fancy technologies, which should come up next, such as you know, mass spectrometry and NMR spectroscopy to be able to get all of these signatures that we then mathematically reduce to come up with biomarkers for disease staging and for understanding exposures and mechanisms behind how those exposures perturb our metabotypes. So what we do in general, we can sum up as translational sciences uh, we work with medical doctors, and they have this really nice medical alphabet, and they tell us about all of their problems. Um, and, and then we de decipher what they're trying to tell us, okay? And then we uh, use our metabolomics technologies, okay? And we can learn all about the metabolites while we're doing this and how that perturbs your biochemical pathways. And we come up next with pictures that look like this. Right? So we think that's a lot better, and uh, right? Because we're really getting a lot more information now out of this picture compared to this one. And we do this by talking to medical doctors. Um, we also work with epidemiologists. They have a similar alphabet. Uh, with toxicologists, about the same. With environmental scientists, about the same. And we go through the same process of deciphering this alphabet that they have and making study designs so that we can learn from our metabolomics profiling about disease, wellness, exposure. Okay, so. Okay, so metabotyping studies. Um, uh, your metabotype, my metabotype, all our metabotypes, it is related to our genome, right? So it's our gender, you know, and, and it's related to our age and, you know, all these things that are, that are in our genome. It's also related to exposure, to xenobiotics, drugs, cosmetics, et cetera, 
to environmental factors, like Dr. Birnbaum was talking about, and even to our gut microflora. So we all have this metabolite that changes, sort of, as things are happening to us, exposures as well as uh, diseases. So because we know there's an association between environmental chemicals and our health, and because we know that this metabotyping is so important, um, we're using this in studies to understand these chemicals and our health. And um, NIEHS recently established the Children's Health Exposure Analysis Resource, which is called CHEER. And this CHEER Center is to help us add and expand the inclusion of environmental exposures in studies of children's health. So this including exposure, metabotyping, and health outcomes, among other things, okay? And just as an example, I'll tell you about a recent study that we did with Frederica Pereira, who's uh, the director of the Columbia Center for uh, Children's Environmental Health. She spent a career looking at uh, pollution and how pollution impacts women during their pregnancy and how that's related to the health outcomes in children later in life. And to make about a two-year study uh, really short, I'll summarize it by saying that we found that polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons cause the biochemical profile of cord blood, which I now call the birth metabolome, to change. And these changes can be correlated with birth outcomes and early life health outcomes in the children. Okay. <laughs>